A teenage girl sets off on her usual morning walk to school. She never makes it to her destination. This is the disappearance of Bung Siriboon. Let's step into the cold. Siriacon Siriboon, known as Bung, was 13 years old when she vanished in the Melbourne suburb of Baronia. Just after 8.20am on the 2nd of June 2011, a neighbour of Bung's watched as the five foot tall teenager, dressed in her school uniform and a raincoat, made her way to school. What seemed to be a glance into the life of a schoolgirl became the last confirmed sighting of Bung. Bung's biological father didn't have much to do with Bung and her older sister. His marriage to his children's mother, Vanida, had ended when the girls were small. Vanida lived with her daughters in Ubon Ratchathania, a province in the northeast of Thailand. 2004 brought change to the small family. While on holiday in Melbourne, Australia, Vanida met Fred Patterson. There was a connection between the two and they kept in touch after Vanida returned home. A long distance relationship carried on for a while and Fred moved to Thailand in 2006. He married Vanida that same year. After their wedding, Fred and Vanida set up a business making awnings. The business failed and Fred went back to Australia to find work. He had hoped to find a mining job that allowed him to fly in and out of the country when not at work, but found employment as a fitter at Cadbury's instead. It was then decided that Vanida and her daughters would move to Australia. The family bought a house on Elsie Street in Baronia. Pang, the elder daughter, attended an adult education college where she completed her Victorian Certificate of Education. After completing an intensive English course, Bung enrolled at a local primary school. By the time she entered her teenage years, Bung had developed interests in drawing, dancing and, as with many girls her age, Justin Bieber. Fred thought highly of his stepdaughter, describing her as, quote, a girl that showed her emotions and was attuned to people's feelings. If someone was on the outer or getting picked on, she'd befriend them. If you hurt yourself, she'd always be the first one there with a pill or a band-aid. She was also very independent. If she didn't like someone, you pretty much knew it. I wouldn't call her streetwise, but she was an older soul. She was one of the good kids." End quote. On the morning of Bung's disappearance, Fred had just returned home from working a night shift. Bung was eating egg rice soup for breakfast. When she set off for school, she left her mobile phone at home, which wasn't unusual. Bung's school, Baronia Heights College, was a ten-minute walk away and the route to the school was one Bung had taken many times. All Bung had to do was walk down Elsie Street, where the last confirmed sighting of Bung took place, and on to Albert Avenue, where Elsie Street stops. Albert Avenue is a main road in Baronia. After crossing the avenue, Bung would turn left onto Harcourt Road and then left again onto Monco Street. Bung would walk down this street, which is also a cul-de-sac, to get to her school's back gate. A witness later said they had seen Bung on Harcourt Road at 8.55am, but the police have never said that this is an official sighting. If it was Bung, she was just 130 metres away from her school. 130 metres away from safety. 
Bung usually returned home from school by 3.40pm. This time came and went. At 4pm, a friend of Bung's called Diame rang the family home. She asked Fred to remind Bung about their plans to play football the next day. When Fred asked why she hadn't said this to Bung at school, Diame said something that would cause panic. Bung hadn't attended school that day. Alarmed, Fred and Vanita drove to Bung's school and the principal confirmed that Bung hadn't been present at school. The school thought that Bung was sick and didn't call Fred and Vanita. Fred and Vanita searched the school but were unable to find any sign of Bung. At 4.20pm, they reported Bung missing at Knox Police Station. Bung's friend Diame helped Fred and Vanita contact everyone the teenager knew, hoping that someone knew something. The next day, Bung's relatives began searching the neighbourhood for her and put up posters in the Baronia Mall. The media began reporting on Bung's disappearance that same day. A few weeks later, the Homicide Squad became involved in the investigation and 500 people had been questioned. Bung's suspected multiple Facebook profiles had been analysed. As the one-month anniversary of Bung's disappearance approached, the police theorised that Bung had been abducted, possibly by a local. By now, Fred had returned to work and Vanida had returned to Thailand. Living in Melbourne was too painful. Locals became alarmed when an 11-year-old girl told police that a masked man had tried to abduct her as she walked to school. However, the girl later admitted that she'd made the story up. It looked as though progress was being made in the investigation when the formation of Task Force Puma was announced. The task force included detectives from the Homicide Squad, Broader Crime Command, Eastern Region and Tactical Intelligence Officers. But two years later, in November 2013, it seemed that investigators felt confident about Bung's fate. Task Force Puma was shut down and Bung's case came under the control of homicide investigators. Over the years, the authorities have periodically released information about the investigation to the public. 1,000 properties have been visited and over 1,100 information reports have been received. 30 main suspects have been identified. Fred himself has said that he was suspected and Bung's biological father was contacted. Robert Knight, who spent time in jail for kidnapping and sexually assaulting two schoolgirls in 1980 and 1996 respectively, was ruled out as a suspect. Police have said that it's unlikely that Mr Cruel, a person who kidnapped three girls, killing one of them between 1987 and 1991, is involved in Bung's disappearance. Mr. Cruel's identity remains unknown. Sex offenders living in the area were questioned and brothels were searched after the police received a tip that a young Asian girl had been seen in one of them. Detective Inspector John Potter has said that abduction remains the best theory. The potential sightings of Bung in a brothel weren't the only sightings the police learned about. Bung may have been seen in the front seat of a white station wagon on Napoleon Road in Roville, another Melbourne suburb, between 8.45am and 9am the morning she vanished. The vehicle is similar to a white 1971-1973 Holden HQ Kingswood station wagon and no rear seats were visible. The seats may have been folded down. The driver was male, 
appeared to be Caucasian between his late thirties and forties and had either light coloured hair or no hair at all. It was also noted that the driver had sleeve style tattoos on both arms and a large tattoo on the left side of his neck. But as Detective Inspector Michael Hughes has pointed out, this sighting conflicts with another sighting of Bung, the one that placed her close to her school at roughly 8.55am and with another sighting of Bung in a different vehicle. This sighting of Bung was brought to the attention of the police in 2014. Bung was seen looking out the back window of a white EA to EF model Ford Falcon station wagon. The driver was in his 50s or 60s. The car was spotted at the traffic lights on Baronia Road, facing east at the intersection of Floriston Road. The car was then seen driving east along Baronia Road and through the roundabout at Albert Road. In 2013, it seemed that the search for Bung had come to an end when investigators found bones in the old Joe's Creek retarding basin in Baronia. The police had been led there by a man who was in his 20s. He claimed to have struck and killed Bung with his car on the morning she went missing and dumped her body in the basin. A week-long search of the basin commenced and property belonging to the man, including his car, was tested for evidence. But the bones discovered turned out to be animal bones and the man was released by the police. His story didn't add up. On the sixth anniversary of Bung's disappearance, Fred walked his stepdaughter's route to school. Photos of her were placed on billboards and the $1 million reward is still on offer. Artist Ashley Goody painted a mural of Bung at a street art precinct called Hosier Lane. The mural is part of the Unmissables project, which is run by the Missing Persons Advocacy Network. The project has writers and artists help families in their search for missing loved ones. But perhaps the most touching tribute to Bung came about when her school merged with Allendale Kindergarten and Baronia Primary School to create the Baronia K-12 College. Life for Bung's fellow students changed when she went missing and may have been one of the first times some students encountered the darker side of life. The three schools merged together in 2012 but was closed down and demolished not long after. But back when the school was in use, Bung's fellow students didn't want to leave Bung's memory in the past and they had a plaque installed in front of a tree as a nod to the missing schoolgirl. Each night the memorial was lit up in the hope that it would guide Bung home.